Top of the morning, Dan and Amy, this uh, video that has gone viral and deservedly so that uh, appears to show Chinese prisoners, Uyghur Muslim prisoners, blindfolded and handcuffed, being transported in northern China. This video was put to the Chinese ambassador to UK, Liu Zhongming, uh, uh, on the BBC. And here's what he had to say about it. Here's the, the, I think, the pretty ineffectual denial or attempt to muddy the issue. Can I ask you why people are kneeling, blindfolded and shaven and being led to trains in modern China? Why, what, what is going on there? I do not know where you get this uh, video tape. You know, sometimes you have a transmi uh, your transfer of a prisons and uh, prisoners, you know, in any country. Um, but, but just what is happening here, Ambassador? I do not know. Where did you get this uh, video the, clip? The, the, and, uh, these, and these have been going around the world. They've been authenticated by Western intelligence agencies and by Australian ex uh, uh, experts who say these are Ouija people let me pushed tell on you, the trains ma, let me, taken let off. Let me tell you this. The uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, Western intelligence keeping up make this a false acquisition against China. They said one million more of Ouija yes. has been uh, persecuted. You know how, how big, how, how many population Xinjiang has? It's a, just about 40 years ago, it's a four, five million. Now it's 11 million people. And people say, you know, we impose, uh, we have a, a ethnic cleansing, but the population has doubled in the 40 years. According, and, uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but according to your own local government statistics, the population growth in Uyghur jurisdictions in that area has fallen by 84% between 2015 and 2018. 84%. That's not right. I, said, well, that, I, I gave you an official figure. figure. You ask me, I give you this figure as a Chinese ambassador. This is a very authentic figure. In the past 40 years, the Uyghur population increased, the, 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 Xin, the population in Xinjiang increased to double. The population doubled. So there's no so-called the restriction of the population. There's so, no so-called false uh, 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 abortion and so on. Yeah, the population doubled, but the Uyghur portion of that population declined. And uh, he tries to paper over that distinction, which that uh, BBC reporter Andrew Barr does a nice job of making sure the viewer understands the propagandizing the ambassador is doing. Let's start there on China with Lieutenant Colonel Jim Carafano, Vice President of the Catherine and Shelby Cullum Davis Institute for International Studies at the Heritage Foundation, author of books including Wiki at War and Private Sector Public Wars. Jim, thanks for joining us. You know, thanks to be with you. I, I, I was having a little PTSD there. I felt like I was listening to Baghdad Bob. Well, yeah, um, but uh, you know, the, the question continues. Uh, OK, we know that uh, the Chai Coms are lying to us. We know that they are engaged in uh, gross human rights abuses of the Uyghurs and the Hong Kongans and uh, many other Chinese. What are we going to do about it? What should we be doing well, about it? I, I think the U.S. from a, I think the U.S. government has been spot on. If you've been following the series of sanctions and statements from the U.S. government, um, a terrific speech last week by A.G. Barr, kind of really laying this out. I think the question we should be asking is not what's going on in the public sector. I think the question we have to ask is what's going on in the private sector. So for all these companies which are so strong believers in corporate responsibility and, you know, they have to give millions of dollars to leftist causes because they really believe in human rights and civil society and everything else, they have to ask themselves, what connections do they have with Chinese companies, all of which relate to the government, which is engaged in mass surveillance, mass detention, forced sterilization, forced labor uh, uh, in, in their economic activities, in their connections with government officials, in their connection with uh, military officials. And I think companies doing business in China have to, have to be – have to audit that and have to be held accountable for what they're doing. Uh, well, that's certainly something that uh, A.G. Barr said last week. And uh, in addition to American corporations, he singled out uh, previously. Uh, now he went right after Hollywood. Hollywood actors, producers, directors pride themselves on celebrating freedom and the human spirit. Uh, 
And, and every year at the Academy Awards, Americans are lectured about how this country falls short of Hollywood's ideals of social justice. But now Hollywood regularly censors its own movies to appease the Chinese Communist Party. The censorship infects not only versions of movies that are released in China, but also many shown in American theaters to American audiences. Uh, time to call those doing the bidding of China on American soil to task as well. And, and, and I think, you know, we all look very skeptically at the National Basketball Association and their economic ties and interests in China and the great reluctance of the league to uh, allow or endorse or permit any kind of criticism uh, of, uh, of Chinese behavior. I just think, you know, these people need to do a lot of soul searching here. I mean, uh, you know, they're really kind of, I mean, they are literally speaking out both sides of their corporate mouths. I mean, they're, the behavior that the Chinese are engaging in is so far beyond the pale of unacceptable behavior. And to see the vast majority of companies essentially try to dismiss it or look the other way is pretty pathetic. So let me uh, uh, borrow from a George Friedman piece about China, a George Friedman Stratford, respected, I think uh, you would agree, respected a geopolitical thinker. Um, he uh, suggests something that uh, prompts the question, at least for me, perhaps we should, the best thing we can do is just cut China off altogether and uh, do the precise opposite of what we've done the last 20 years, trying to figure out a way to constructively engage, now constructively disengage and isolate to the extent possible, because it turns out that the uh, Thucydides trap that uh, deep thinkers like you like to talk about uh, is is uh, it's a, it potentially a real thing. But not with respect to China, argues George Friedman. The error is the idea that China is a rising power. China is rising to the point that it can even challenge the United States. That's an error. The argument that the U.S. may overreact is based on this error. The most important thing to understand about China is that its domestic market cannot financially absorb, absorb the product of China's industrial plant. Yes, it's grown, but that growth has made it a hostage to foreign customers. And so there is no rising China that is going to lead us inevitably to war. Uh, and, and so perhaps the response is more aggressive, constructive disengagement. Yeah. So for folks who aren't familiar with the Thucydides trap, this is from a book by uh, an article in a book by Graham Allison. Uh, and it's a reference to uh, the Peloponnesian Wars, the difference between Sparta and Athens and the conflicts between rising powers and powers in existence. It was a, it was a crap book. Uh, it was bad history. <laughs> and I agree with Freeman. It's a bad analogy to the way it looked at the relationship between the United States and China. I, you know, I completely agree that the, trying to accommodate China's rise was a huge mistake. It was like accommodating, uh, you know, a, a, an out of control teenager by giving them a credit card, the keys to the car, and a, and a, and a six pack of malt liquor. Um, on the other hand, I think, you know, we have to grow our own economy, and we don't want to do things that damage our own economy. I could care less if we buy toilet paper from China. Uh, actually, we don't buy toilet paper from China, but but you know, the products like that. Um, what I care about is that we where china is doing things which impinge on the interests of u.s allies and the united states that we take a strong stance i think this administration has actually adopted the right strategy for dealing with china and i think that the chinese government by its actions in many ways demonstrates that it's feeling that pressure um you i i i, I do worry about kind of over investing in disengagement right we're you're 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 spending so much money, time, and resources in disengaging from things that aren't important that that's kind of a waste of resources. Well, what about any reparations for this COVID-19 release? I mean, they've destroyed our economy. They've killed hundreds of thousands of Americans, and they've got to pay. I mean, I'm you know, revenge is a dish best served cold, but they've got to, something's got to happen. Well, I mean, there there is no practical mechanism to force China to give reparations. That's just the reality of it. Um, we've got to get our economy up and running. Getting a couple of billion dollars from China isn't going to do that. What's going to get our economy up and running is getting people back to work, figuring out how to deal with the public health issues, um, doing business with friends and allies instead of doing business with China. These are much, much more important things. All right. Uh, you uh, took a shot at Thucydides. Wow. Uh, and... I know I like, well, I'm not a big Thucydides fan. Either, yeah, right? I mean, wow. I'm, I'm definitely not a fan of Graham Allison. Uh, I understand. I, there's a lot, there's, I understand no, there's a lot of great stuff in, in, in Thucydides itself. Uh, in terms of understanding 
realist foreign policy. I love it. But uh, look, you don't read ancient Greek history to understand dealing with China. I'm sorry. Uh, well, OK, so, uh, you know, the Thucydides uh, comments notwithstanding. What about Braxton Bragg? Will you go to the, the mat for Braxton Bragg? Braxton Bragg, President Trump did. Listen, go to the community. Say, how do you like the idea of renaming Fort Bragg? And then what are we going to name it? You're going to name it after the Reverend Al Sharpton? What are you going to name it, Chris? Tell me what you're going to name it. Fort Sharpton. Uh, Jim, what do you think? So here's where the president has a, has a point. And, and look, I was never one, you know, as a, as a former military officer and military historian, never in favor of naming federal posts after Confederate generals. Never thought it was a good idea. But to the president's point is these installations transcend the people they were named after. When you say Fort Bragg today, you don't think about some guy on horseback in the Civil War. You think mm -hmm. about young kids, 18 years old, jumping into Normandy in the pitch black and fighting for their lives. There's this enormous history of these military installations. And, and the president, I think, has a fair point where we have a fair conversation about this. Do we want to erase the courage and accomplishments and service and sacrifice of over 100 years of military history? Because it just happens to be named after somebody that that maybe isn't a paragon of virtue. Well, because they don't. Well, well, well also, the don't uh, mean that anymore. They mean they mean us. Also, too, and just, I think it's, just yeah. on just on the point of Braxton Bragg, uh, you know, history is complicated. I mean, Braxton Bragg also fought for this country in the Spanish American War. So I did Robert E. Lee and other people, but look, yes, I look, I, right. I but they're traitors, and I get that. And, you know, I'll give you a different example. At Washington Lee University, you know, Lee spent the last half of his life trying to bring the country back together. And I think that's something worth noting and celebrating. So if you want to honor, you know, Robert E. Lee for his post-Civil War accomplishments and trying to heal the nation, I'm fine with that. But this is where I think this is the point is, is when we talk about our history, we don't want to whitewash it away. You know, take Christopher Columbus, right? Christopher Columbus was an explorer and an adventurer. And here we are trying to get a new generation of Americans to get excited about going into space and braving into the unknown. When you wipe away Christopher Columbus, okay, you take away the fact that, you know, he's to help start the slave trade, but you also abolish the idea of, of the idea of adventure and courage and exploration. This is why these kinds of things need to be conversations. They don't need to be mobs dragging down statues uh -huh. or people doing things just for political gain. Uh, an, an aspect of the purge that's not talked about enough is uh, how it plays out in military, in the branches of our military. Uh, Mo Brooks, Republican rep from Bama, uh, the U.S. Army's Equity and Inclusion Agency uh, has a course entitled Operation Inclusion, the agency promoting the line that if you support enforcing immigration law, say things like all lives matter, you're a white supremacist. Uh, he, uh, Brooks is the one, Representative Brooks is the one who found out the agency had organized these seminars to re-educate the uniformed and civilian personnel at Redstone Arsenal in Alabama. In addition to that, we've got um, Christopher Rufo over at the Manhattan Institute points out, uh, find, uh, finds out that a private diversity consulting firm conducting a training titled Difficult Conversations About Race in Troubling Times for several federal agencies uh, and uh, the trainers are asked, uh, at, at, tr the trainers ask white managers to create safe spaces for black employees, about what it means to be black and seeing their pain and so on and so forth. You know, this is all basically the Robin D'Angelo white fragility uh, race hustling industry. And uh, the military and federal agencies are uh, diving in head first. Problem? Yeah, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me after 9 11 when we were going to fight terrorists, so we reached out to a whole bunch of organizations to help us understand Islamic and Islamic radicalism, and, and some of them were guys that actually helped plan 9-11. Uh, you know, I think you know, DOD has already repudiated that, that training, so has the Army. But, I mean, look, our federal agencies need to be much, much smarter about this. The, the idea isn't to bring partisan politics into govern, government and indoctrinate our employees and military citizens. It's to, it's to have them act responsibly in the workplace. And if we have yahoos that can't understand the difference between that, then, then they shouldn't be working for us. He is Lieutenant Colonel Jim Carafano, VP of the Catherine and Shelby Cullen Davis Institute for International Studies at the Heritage Foundation. Jim, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it. All right. See you, my friend. And he joined us on our turnkey.proanswer line. Hear about the big stories of the day. 
Then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. A storm is on the horizon, and you need to keep the lights on no matter what. Your business relies on the power being on 24-7. It's the lifeblood of your data and computer systems. Weather-related outages from the power company are not acceptable. Your need for a source of power that's reliable 24-7, along with round-the-clock service that can dispatch technicians to your site immediately, is mission critical. Your business needs Charles Equipment Energy Systems on speed dial. These are the big boys, not residential or solar, but reliable industrial generators for emergency backup or events. When you need more than a 100-foot extension cord plugged into a small engine generator, call Charles Equipment Energy Systems. They keep the lights on with rental generators for job sites or power outages. The storm season is here. Plan ahead. Call now to prepare generators for sudden damage and potential power outages. Call 630-834. 6000. That's 630-834-6000 or charlesequipment.com. charlesequipment.com. Feeling kind of run <laughs> hot as heck. Dan and I are talking about some hot chicks. Anywho, <clears throat> are you feeling a little run down? <clears throat> Need a little pick me up? Coffee not doing it for you? Maybe you're bloated, have some swelling. You should try Balance of Nature. I'm not kidding you. Um, I've been taking it for three months now. Uh, more, a little bit more than that. I can't remember. Everything's a fog. And it's working. I'm getting uh, I have more energy. And I like having a strong immune system. That's why I take Balance of Nature because I'm not getting enough fruits and veggies on my own. Six capsules a day. You're getting 10 servings of 31 different fruits and veggies. So start your journey to better health today. Call this number. Health coaches slash operators are standing by. 